Good evening, No Horsing Around family. Uh, Zach Boyd here, back to give you another edition. I thought it'd be cool to do it right before the season starts, a top 10 rankings of the Colts. Um, just go through the list. And the, the funny thing I found when I was doing this, I wrote down like 14, 15 names. Um, and you know you've got a really good football team when you're able to write so many names and you got to knock people out of your top 10. Just a testament to Chris Ballard, the way he's drafted, the way we've constructed this team, the mechanics that go into putting something this special together. Um, before we get started, I, I just want to get go put it out there. Eric Fisher not on this list because he's not practiced. Um, got activated today. That's big news. That means he's probably going to play sooner than, rather than later. A little bit surprised that Antoine Woods got cut. I thought he would be your backup nose tackle. Um, seems like we like some of those younger guys a little bit better. Um, so Chris Ballard, you know, that's life and day in the life of, of the NFL. You think you're on a football team, the next thing you know, you're, you're looking for a job. Um, so, yeah, no Eric Fisher. Um, some guys I think when we do a midseason top 10, I'll probably shoot right up the ladder. You know, you're talking about your your Julian Blackmans. You're talking about your Quiddy Page, your Bobby Okariki especially. But those guys won't be on this top 10. Let's just dive right in. Remember, as always, like, rate, review, subscribe, share, join the family. That's all we want to ask you to do is just join our family and, and let us use your voice and let it be heard in the Colts community. Starting off at number 10, um, I dig Xavier Rhodes. Um, I think he's very, very crucial to this football team. He's very important um, cog in that wheel. And if we, we look back in those first you know, first half of the season last year, guys, he was he was tremendous. I mean, he was a Pro Bowl candidate, in my opinion. And then injuries kind of crept in as the season went on. Still played solid, but wasn't playing quite to that elite level as he did early on. Um, but definitely, uh, I feel like he, he deserved to be in that top 10. And I think we forget about him a little bit, just how special of a football player he can be. Um, so big thanks for Xavier Rhodes, and we'll just see how this season goes. Um, going on at number nine, Ryan Kelly. You know, those offensive linemen, they don't always get their credit. But on this list, and you no know, horsing around top 10, he definitely got, you know, on that top 10 list. As steady as they come, he's always one of the best two, three, four centers in the NFL. You don't hear a lot about him. You don't hear a lot about the about mistakes that he makes. And I'm generally not for drafting a center in the first round, especially not a top 20 pick. Um, but in this situation, I was. He's just elite. I mean, you know, he's, he's ahead of his class. He's almost generational with his talent. Super, super steady football player. Um, so I definitely thought he should be on this list coming in at number nine. Um, number eight, this is the, one of the youngest guys on the list, uh, but I think he really has deserved it and kind of grown in that second half of the season. And, and Michael Pittman Jr., we might get a little bit of flack, you know, comment in this, man. Let us know. Let's get a healthy discussion going. I want to hear from you guys. Uh, but I put Pittman Jr. at number eight. Um, I was torn between him and Kelly, eight and nine. I went with Pittman Jr., has huge upside, and he showed what he can do late in the season, right? Like, he's a true number one wide receiver. Um, I feel like he can take his game to that next level. Question is, how good? Good will he be and how quick will he be? Well, that connection worked really, really well with him and Carson Wentz. Um, we'll just have to see. But I definitely think he's a polished guy. And in year two, you're going to see that trajectory go way up. So I did put him in at number eight. Um, number seven, Kenny Moore, one of my favorite Colts, one of my favorite Colts of all time. Um, guy just makes plays, right? He doesn't get credit at all around the league. But the biggest testament is you could tell teams game plan to play against Kenny Moore. You know, they don't want to they don't want to throw the ball his way unless they absolutely have to. Um, he's an he's an incredible football player, an incredible athlete, um, and so important. You know, we talk about those hot pockets on this team. Nickel, you know, defensive end, three tech, and then of course, weak side linebacker, Darius Leonard, who will be on the list a little bit later. Um but definitely, definitely deserve to be top seven. Could have been, you know, as high as probably five on this list, but I went with seven just because we have such a stacked roster. Um, number six is the guy you never hardly hear about. Um, it's Braden Smith. Um, I thought Braden Smith is, is the epitome of just a bookend tackle. Whether he's right tackle, left tackle, doesn't matter. He's a bookend. He deserved the contract that he got. Um, he just shuts up and goes out there and plays football. And anytime you're protecting a quarterback's blind side, um, you definitely deserve to be inside of a top 10. Um, I think Braden Smith, 
he's so funny. You, you hardly ever hear about him because he just doesn't make any mistakes. And, you know, anytime you play on a line with Quentin Nelson, you know, that's where the fandom's going to go. That's where the fandom's always going to go. But he is a very, very good right tackle. I'm so happy for him and his family that they got that big extension. He's going to be a Colt for quite some time. Uh, moving into that five, speaking of of his counterpart, I had big Q5-6 Quentin Nelson, um, <clears throat> such an important football player. I don't use the word lightly when I say elite, but he is as elite as he'll ever be. I mean, he's a Hall of Fame-worthy guard. He is everything as advertised coming out you know, of Notre Dame. Everyone kind of questioned, why would you pick him at number six? And he has shown everybody, you know, game in, game out, year in, year, in, year out. Um, he is a very, very good football player, and he is as good as it gets at his position, and he's young. Like, he's in the middle of his prime. Like, we're getting ready to witness the best four years of Quentin Nelson. You know, God forbid any bad injuries. Probably the best four years that you'll ever get the chance to see, you know, Quentin Nelson play the guard position. And when it's all said and done, I believe he'll be one of the greatest guards in NFL history. Um, and he's going to be in that same breath, guys. I don't think that's hyperbole. I don't think any of that. I think it's true. It's real. Um, he is really that good. Um, so rounding out, he's number five. Number four, um, this one might be controversial, so I'm really interested, you know, in, you, you know, why it jumps in. Jason David jumps in a lot in the comments. Um, I want to hear you guys react to Carson Wentz being the number four. And the reason is because is we haven't seen it, right? We haven't seen it. And I, all I have to base it on is last year. Um, when we do our midseason review, if Carson Wentz is the number one in this top ten rankings and he moves up to one, our season's going to be phenomenal. Um, but right now, he's just got to play. He's just got to get on the field. He's got to practice, go out there and do it, prove to the coaching staff, his teammates, and everybody that he can go out there and do it. And I do believe he has the ability to have a really, really special season. But right now, as it stands, I got him in at number four. Like I said, super interested in hearing what you guys think about him and where where would you have ranked him in your top ten. Just with a good conversation going on as far as that goes. Number three, probably one of my favorite Colts. Um, I think anybody who's ever listened to my podcast knows that I, I, you know, I'm a fanboy of Jonathan Taylor, man. I think he is that special. You know, I talk about at least next three or four or five years, you're going to see it with this kid. I mean, he is unbelievable. Um, he does all the right things, practices the right way. If that man can stay healthy, um, he'll be one of the few running backs that probably earn a really good second contract in the NFL. Um, I think he's special. I do. I think he can catch the ball better than people give him credit for. Obviously, he's an elite running back. Um, he's going to be a very, very big part of this football team, taking pressure off of Carson Wentz. Can he take his game to the next level? Can he, can he catch more passes and take them for bigger gains? I think that's the only thing that we need to see with him. His pass blocking um, seemed to pick up as the season goes on, and I did have him as our number three. Um, number two, I really debated two and one. Um, you could make an argument for either either one. Uh, DeForest Buckner is my number two player on the Indianapolis Colts. I, I, guys, you cannot stress to me or anyone else in this league just how crazy of a freak athlete this guy is. Uh, DeForest Buckner in the middle of his prime. We got him uh, for a 13th pick in the first round, and he's 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 lived up to the bill. I mean, he's really, really – it probably exceeded my expectations. I didn't realize this guy was that good. He just, you know, one-handed dislodges people and throws them out of the way. Um, and you have to double-team him. You're not going to beat him. Uh, you're not going to beat him play after play. If you don't double-team him and you don't have help on his side, he's going to win. I mean, he's going to get back there. He's going to bat a ball down. He's going to get a sack. He's going to strip it. I mean, he's going to do something. He's an incredible football player and an incredible human being. And for me, um, I think he is such an important cog for this defense. And as he goes, everybody else on that defensive line goes. So I go with DeForest Buckner as my number two guy. And the number one, obviously, the Maniac um, got that huge contract this offseason. Um, he's the one guy on our team. He's a game changer you know, you know, on defense. Reason I put him one over Buckner is because the things that he can do in the passing game and the run game. He can always slap that ball out. He's famous for causing fumbles, but he can he can rush and blitz on sacks, strip sack the quarterback. He's good with intercepting the football. Um, he's our vocal leader, and he's just our best at, best athlete. I mean, when it all comes down to it, extremely long arms, extremely talented. 
I love a guy who talks a lot but then shows up on the field. Um, We need him to be extra special. If he can have, you know, that elite level season and be healthy, we are going to have a very, very good season on defense. And uh, I want to get back to some interceptions for him last year. You know, he didn't have as many opportunities to pick the ball off. He's just a special guy, man. I mean, he's just – he's an unbelievable athlete and good for him, good for his family. And he's my number one guy. Um, There you go. We got 10 right there, our top 10 players. We ranked them out. We'd love to hear you guys in the YouTube section. Subscribe, link, review, rate, the whole nine yards. You know, um, let's get a good conversation. Goes, who's in your top 10? You know, where did I go wrong? Where did I go right? We're waiting to hear about it. And, guys, thank you so much. And if you haven't already, join the No Horsing Around family. We'd be glad to have you.